All right, guys. So thank you for coming to this tutorial. Um, this tutorial is going to cover probably my least favorite topic. Okay, it's going to be dealing with dates. And personally, I have always avoided dealing with dates, and I, I hate dealing with dates for so many reasons. I mean, it comes down to dealing with time zones. Um, the date formatter is confusing. The date object is confusing. I, I find it all pretty confusing. So, some it's actually something I needed for myself. If you happen to be following my recipe um, full stack series, um, essentially I'm creating an Instagram style app. And one of the things I need to be able to do is look at when things were posted. Because if you if you open Instagram, for instance, and you look at rest or you look at posts, I should say, you'll notice that you can see how long ago they're updated. You know. We can see whether it was 15 minutes ago. <clears throat> and if it's a matter of minutes, it says five minutes ago. And if it was, you know, within the year, it doesn't add the year to the end of the date. And if it was longer than a year, it'll tell you the month, the day, and the year. So it all gets pretty confusing, both in the output of what you get to see as the viewer in the storage of things. Uh, you know, are you going to store it in the database um, in, U in the UTC time zone? Or are you going to store it in the user's personal time zone? So there's a lot of things that get kind of confusing. So I decided to kind of tackle it. I tackled it for myself and I made this for myself and I'm actually going to use the same document we're going through here as a reference for myself. So let's go ahead and look, okay? So right now I'm in Eastern time zone, okay? So it is um, 2.37, okay? Let's plug in here. So it's 2.37. And so if I were to run just through up here, okay, what I should get I can use this on the side here so you can see that it's running, okay? We're, we're in a playground right now. We're not in an actual project. But that's okay because this playground is sufficient for what we're trying to do. So let's get rid of this guy. So we can see right here that the current date is April 15th, 2020. April 15th, year of 2020. And when I just use current date, it gives me the current date in my current time zone, okay? And the next thing I have in here is a new way to use date. So this one, I, I create a new variable called one minute from now. And I said it's the current date and how long since now? 60 from now. So you can obviously understand now that if one minute from now is 60 units, then the units in here must be seconds. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying let one minute from now equal the current date. Well, in, in, inherently it's the current date. The time interval since now is going to be 60. Okay. Now, the next piece is old date. Okay. So old date when i if i come here and i say let blah equal date dot init so i can do dot init regular which gives me the current date same thing as doing that i can say right here for instance i can say time interval since now and i can add seconds to now but some things that are also out there are time interval since 1970 okay or time interval since these are the two options you have in swift so time interval since 1970 so if i were to say if I were to click this and write 60, okay, then what you can see is, let's let's read it, it says, returns a date initialized relative to the current date, or this one's the current, sorry. Um, we have since 1970, we're here. It says, relative to 000 universal uh, UTC on January 1st, 1970, okay. So, kind of confusing, but what this is, is just saying we're going to use 1970 January 1st as reference date. I don't know why, and I'm sure there's some sort of history there, but that's one option. And the other one is they have also um, time intervals. There's time interval since 1970, and there's also since reference date, and that one is since January 1st, 2001. So that's kind of confusing too. Personally, I, I've never used them, and I never intend to. So that's that one, okay? But that's how you write it. So here, and I'm going to have this file uploaded, so you can kind of just copy and paste what you want. So that's how to create a date, okay? That's not how to look at a date, just how to create it. So now we have something called a date formatter. So date formatters are what let it, essentially, the date itself has all the information of what, what the date is. But whether it looks like this or any other possible way, like, you know, maybe I don't want to show the time, or maybe I want it to be in military time, or, you know, there's all sorts of options. So... What we're going to go through is all the different types of date formatting, date styles, and time styles. Okay, so date styles will modify the front half, and time styles will modify that the right side half. Okay, so what I did is I let's start with this one. So the date formatter, if the date style is full and the uh, time style is full, then let's look down here. You can ignore this for now because I did most of my, I did for most everything now on. I did printing. Okay, so you can look down here. So the full one looks like this: Wednesday, April fifteenth, twenty twenty. 
at 2.38.26 Eastern Daylight Time. So that's really descriptive. That's what the full description looks like. Now let's look at long. So long, we have April 15th, 2020 at 2.38.26, okay? That's getting smaller, EDT instead of that whole thing. There's no Wednesday now, okay? Now I can go to medium. Let's look at that. So April 15th, 2020 at 2.38.26 p.m. And now we're really in small, okay? And that's good. That's what we want. That's what I want for my app. You know, it depends on what you want. So the big thing is, is all I'm doing is I'm still looking at the same thing. So I'm just creating, I have a date format or object. And I'm going through and changing the, the values of date style and time style and seeing what the output looks like, okay? So I'm changing them and saying a print the current date with the current date formatter type, okay? So now we've seen through medium. Let's look at short. Short is very truncated, okay? It looks like that. Let's look at none. What is none? None is none. There's just none, okay? So now let's look at some other options. We have... What we can do is we can actually dictate uh, different formats using strings, okay? And I'll include a link to all the different ways you can you can look at them. So if, for instance, I use this following date format, we would get something like this. We'd just say April 15th, okay? Now, if I add the Y, 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 suddenly I get the years, okay? And I can even make modifications to the time zone, okay? So this is where it gets interesting. So I can go here, enter, and it's going to show me that, so if you'll notice, I put YYYY-MM-DD, okay, and then a T, and then HH colon MM colon SS, okay. From my understanding, I can put anything. I can probably even do another one of this, okay. If I run it, I should, there we go. I got a double dash here. So what I put inside here is what, what happens to go through. And then the same way you have T, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now let's go back to the original. It's just a dash. The same way you have a T here, I can make this say 2, okay? And so I can put that as long as it's in those. Um, I'm actually kind of doing this on the fly. I didn't prepare this part. So um, we have these, okay? The apostrophes. So as long as I hit enter, I can almost guarantee that it's going to actually accept it. It's going to write 2 all the way in the middle. Okay, so really what it's reading for is the Y's. It's reading for the M's, the D's, the H, the M, the S. You can write anything you want inside this apostrophe, and you can even put like a bunch of these dashes here. Okay, so you can format it however you want. So these will indicate what the actual date pieces will look like, and then the things in between them will dictate kind of the other characters in between. So look at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just bring that back. So now let's go ahead and run it back through here. Okay, so... There's two things we can do. One thing we can do is we can create a date forward. So I can say date formatter. I'm going to, um, sorry, what I'm going to say is, sorry, for this section, what we're going to do is we're going to actually work backwards. We're going to take a string. So imagine you had created a time stamp and you put it in your database. This is what it looked like. Now, suddenly, you need to take that piece of time data and convert it backwards into a date object that we can use for comparative reasons, okay? So what you can do you can designate, okay, this, this, this string was going, it's going to, we're kind of deciding this. So we're saying, oh, I know that it was stored as a UTC value, okay? So given that I know that, and given that I know that I stored all of them with this format, I can say, try, well, I'm telling date formatter, date formatter, try to create a date from date string using the current date format. So by setting the date format here, just to reiterate, okay, by setting this date format, we're telling it how to read this string. So when I say the new date from string, this is now a date object, okay? When I tell it create this new date from string variable, it's going to create a date from the date string using the format that you just set up here. So this one matches up perfectly. So year, 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 month, month, day, day, with a T in between, and then 190807. So I mean, it's perfect. So now, when I run this code all the way through here, and by the way, you can run code by clicking the plus or another option, you can just click shift enter at the level you want, okay? So all the code ran through here, and sure enough, here we have it. It read it properly, as you can see, okay? So moving on down, the next thing we want to do is be able to extract date components, okay? So what's the point of extracting a date component? I'll tell you how I'm going to use it in my app, for instance. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to check date component years. So I'm going to say if a post was done in the last, you know, in the same calendar year, you know, if it's 2017 to 2017, then I'm not going to have my application show me the year that something was posted. It's going to be implicit that if it just shows a month and a day, it must have been this calendar year. So I can extract the year component and I can do comparative things with that. That's one option, right? Or maybe I want to compare, um, you know, I can say, oh, well, if if how long how long it's been since this was posted was greater than 60 minutes, or if the hours component is greater than zero, then I can inherently know that I'm not going to say that this was posted 67 minutes ago. I'm just going to say one hour ago, right? Because the user doesn't really care. They just, you know, they just care, oh, was it an hour ago? Was it 10 minutes ago? So by pulling components out like this, um, we, we are able to do really good comparative work. So right here, we'll see that we have let components equal calendar.current.date components. Okay. So I'm essentially trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create date components. I have to create a calendar object. Okay. And that calendar object, I'm going to grab current and then date components. And then I pick an array of all the components I want to grab. Okay. So make sure you note that this is an array from here to here. So I want to grab the day, I want to grab the month, I want to grab the year, and I want to grab the minute, okay? And it's going to ask me, well, what do you want to grab it from? I'm going to grab it from this current date, okay? So if you're just writing it out yourself, you can go like this, and you can pick this one right here, the components, okay? Set count right there. And that is an array. And that right there will be the date that you choose. But for me, that's this, okay? Because remember, I sent current date, that's what I set all the way up here, okay? And so now, if I click shift enter through here, it's going to show me all these pieces. This is the 15th day right there, of the fourth month of the year 2020. And then I only extracted minutes and mm, it doesn't look right for so far, but let's run it one, once more. <clears throat> I'm going to click play through here again. And then I'm going to click play through here. There we go. Minute 48. So this is the 48th minute of whatever given hour. I didn't grab the hours, but I did grab the minute component. So that's how that works, okay? So now that we have these components, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those components to do some comparative work. So you can actually compare dates in and of themselves, but um, that's probably not how I'm personally gonna be using it. So you can, you can compare dates with an if uh, greater than and equal to, the same way you can compare numbers because they are, from what I understand, the, the, the protocol essentially is something that can be compared. And so the next thing here, is going to be, we're going to create a new date from components and then we're going to compare them. So I'm going to create a new calendar, okay? And then I'm going to create some ran, I'm going to create a new date from these components, okay? So sorry if this was a bit confusing. This is all one piece. This is all one lesson from here to here, I should say. You know, these are all mini lessons. So this is one mini lesson. So this is how we created all the components out of a date, okay? And then this is how I created a date back out of those components, okay? So one thing that's important to note is that this current date, when I, when I grabbed these components, okay, I didn't grab the hour. So from what I understand, if I were to come here and hit shift enter again, new date will likely not include any information about, yeah, you, you, you'll notice that it says it's April 15, 2020, but it thinks it's 12.50 in the morning. It doesn't understand that it's 2.50. And the reason it doesn't understand that is because it was fed minutes information. That's how it got that 50 piece of information, but it was never fed hours. So it doesn't know that it's the 50th minute of blah hour. It just thinks it's the 50th minute. That's all it knows. So if I'd fed it hours, it would know what time of the day it was. Okay. So that, sorry, that's that. Now we're going to compare two dates. And that'll be the last portion of this. So comparing two dates, we have, um, I'm going to first create a date object. I'm going to use a date formatter and set the time zone. Okay. I'm going to choose the date. Okay. And this is a pretty legit way. This is pretty much exactly how I'm going to be doing it in my application. So I'm going to create today's date just like this. Okay. And then I'm going to use the date formatter, set the format that I will have set in my database. I'm going to write what time zone, everything in my database was stored in. Okay. I'm going to grab all that information and then I'm going to use date formatter dot date to convert my database string back into a date that I can compare with. And then here's where it gets fun. I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm doing component difference. So it's very similar to just components, 
but the difference is that there's one extra parameter. So I asked for the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second, okay? But I didn't just say from, I added a two. So that let me compare the old date to the new date, okay? And so I made, I started making these files probably like two or three days ago, I think. So if I hit shift enter, this was, yeah, this was two days ago. So it should tell me that I've created this two days ago. So if I shift enter all the way through, it'll tell me that I created all of this information one day, 23 hours, 17 minutes, and 17 seconds ago. So almost two days ago is when I started preparing this. So that, and, and what I did is I, I grabbed this based off of the day that I started making this. That was a string of when I pretty much started making this whole tutorial. So that is how I can convert an old time in the form of a string back into a date object and compare it to the date object that represents right now, okay? And that is from here, okay, all the way to here just so we don't get lost, okay? And that is that, that's all I actually have to show you guys. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.